Whether you're working with physical media like pens, pencils and even painting or digital media like Inkscape, Illustrator or any of the wealth of programs that you can use on your PC and laptops. Adding a border to your designs or a background can really elevate the entire design. So today I'm going to show you how you can do it yourself. Hello my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another Inkscape tutorial and today we're going to be covering the two tone backgrounds that you can add to your image. So without further ado, let's get started. Now as you can see on screen, I have this BPG graphic that I have quickly created. It's nothing special, but it looks quite good. However, it's missing something and what it's missing is a little bit of polish. Now you can do that by simply adding a shine onto the letters or adding little extra bits. But often what will help it more than anything else is by adding a border or a background. So let me show you exactly what I mean before we start on the main project. Now I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And as you can see, it is just a simple graphic that I have uh, grouped together if i was to hold shift control and g as you can see them are all the different elements that i have set out so i've just grouped them back together and what i want to do is i just want to add a random shape so i'm going to go with a circle a circle is a basic shape that you can add and i'm going to just put that over the top and then using my select tool i'm going to drop that to the bottom and look at the difference that has made already. Now it isn't because of the colour choice that I have done right here with the yellow and then the dark blues. This has everything to do with the way that this will offset the original design. It draws the eyes into the centre of whatever shape you put behind it. And this is used all over the world with many different kinds of designs so today i'm going to show you something that looks a little bit like this this is what you call a two-tone image and it is very simple to achieve this kind of look it was used a lot back in the 1980s and 90s with comic books like the beano and dandy and then of course dc and Marvel started to adopt these kind of images as well. So let's get started and I'll show you how you can create your own. Now firstly I want to get this one and just move that out of the way. We don't need that right at this moment in time. And I'm going to keep this circle right here. You've seen the difference it can make with a yellow circle behind the blue. So now I'm going to change this to black just so it's easier for you all to see. And I'm going to change my opacity as well. Now what I've done here is I've just opened up my fill and stroke menu on the right hand side. If yours is not open already, you can find it right here with this icon which says fill and stroke when you highlight it. Give that a click and once this menu has opened up you will be able to add a gradient now what i'm going to do with this being a circle is i'm going to add a circular gradient which is this one right here now as you can see this gradient is a very gradual one now the opacity is what is going to matter with the settings that we are going to use so what i want to do is i want to make this a little bit wider in the middle and then i want it to fade out a lot sharper than it currently is now in order to do this you can simply click this and drag along and as i do you can see that it widens the solid part of the circle and the gradient that's contained within it now it looks very sharp as in it gets to this point right here with it being completely solid and then 
it starts to fade out. Now, when you want it to start fading out, it's completely up to you, but I think somewhere around halfway would be perfect. Now, as you can see, I am actually using the node that's appeared on these lines, and that will give me more control over where I want this gradient to start and stop. But this looks around perfect to me right now. So this is the gradient we are going to use. Now we have to create all of the different two-tone shapes, but we don't need to go to the effort of creating each one of them individually. We can just use one shape. So again, I'm going to come back to my circle and ellipses tool on the left. And this time I'm going to hold control and shift and I'm going to create a perfect circle. Now I want it to be around this big. Now it's worth mentioning that when you are creating this circle, the smaller this circle is, the more strain it is going to put on your hardware because we are about to use tiled clones. But first, what I want to do is I want to get the dimensions of this circle. So I'm going to give that a click. And as we come up to the top, we can see exactly the dimensions that have been set. Now I do kind of like the oval, so I'm going to keep it like that. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to round up this number because this will make it easier for the next step. Now, as you can see, my width is 1045. What I want to do is I'm going to triple click that and it will highlight everything. And I'm going to round that up to 1000. Hit enter and there we go. Next, I'm going to do the same on this, but this time I'm going to round it up to 800. And there we go, we now have our oval. And we are going to keep in mind the width and the height. So we've got the width of 1000 and the height of 800. Now, when I select this circle, as you can see, the bounding box is not a circle, it is a square. And we want this circle to be right here in the corner of that square. So to do that, we are going to select this little circle and then we're going to hold shift and select this large gradient circle as well. But in order to actually line them up, we need our align and distribute menu open. Now mine already is open right here, but if yours is not, you can find it on the right hand side here. Give that a click and this one will open up. Now what I want you to do is select last selected from this drop down. And then I want you to use both of these two buttons. This is going to line it up on the left edge. And this one is going to line it up on the top. And there we go. We now have it in the corner perfectly. With that done, we can then click on the canvas so we can deselect everything. We can select this one again. And with that one selected, I am going to come up to edit, scroll down to clone and create tiled clones. Now this is going to open up a separate menu and it will start on the symmetry tab just like this. Now, before we move on to the tab that we're going to use, I want you to make sure that you have width and height selected instead of rows and columns. Now this is why we remembered the width and the height of the main gradient circle. So we're going to highlight all of this and we're going to say 1000, exactly the same width. And of course we want this one to be 800 which is exactly the same height. With that done, we can now move over to the trace tab. Now this is going to work kind of differently from any of the other tabs within the create tile clones menu. But at a basic level, what you're going to want to pay attention to is number one and number three. So when it comes to option one, pick from the drawing, 
This is going to be what it recognizes when it creates all of the tiled clones from here to here. So as we know, we already have this set up with these dimensions, which is going to cover this entire circle. And when it goes over the top of this circle, we want it to pay attention to how opaque it is. Now there is no color other than black, so we don't want it just to pay attention to the color, and we don't want it to pay attention to reds, greens, blues, the hue, the saturation, or the lightness. We just want it to pay attention to the opacity. So I have selected opacity. Next, I'm going to come down to option three. The option three is what it will change when it finds the opacity. I want it to change the size and the color. None of the others. So that means it is going to change the size and the color of this when it reaches anything that isn't completely transparent. And it will reduce the size when it is. So a transparent area, like in the corners, there will be nothing. Whereas, if we came into the center, the circle would remain unchanged exactly like it is right here. If you have any trouble, please, by all means, let me know in the comment section down below. But now that I have opacity selected and the size and the color as what to change, then we're going to come to this button here and hit create. Now, like I said earlier, the smaller this circle is, the more circles there will be on this final product. And the more circles there are, the more nodes there are, hence why it will put a bigger strain on your hardware. For this example, I've left it quite big, as you can see, and now we have something that looks like this. Now what I want to do is I want to get rid of the background, the gradient that we used to begin with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom right in and I'm going to select in between these circles and it will select that big circle in the background. And now I'm just going to hit delete. And we have something that looks like this. Now the good thing about this is these are all clones and this is the original. So any changes that I make to this circle right now will be reflected in this image here. So let's just zoom in a little bit more so it's easier for you to see. Say that I wanted to increase the size so all of these circles were touching. Just by doing that, as you can see, it has now increased the size. And you can go even bigger if you want. And you can even change the color to anything that you would like. Like so. And you can also go further to that as well. If you select your node tool, for example, I can start squashing it down or making it even bigger. And anything that I do is going to make changes to the full image. Just like that. And as you can see, you can make some really cool effects. But for now, I just want the whole circle at the original size that I had it. So I'm just undoing everything. And I think that is about right. I think I just want to make this a little bit smaller so it's more of a gradual fading out something like that and i am just going to zoom out and now i'm going to bring this bpg graphic back in now of course that's at the bottom so i need to raise it to the top using this button right here and then I'm just going to scroll that up a little bit. And we have something that looks like this. 
Now there is one more thing that I wanted to show you when it comes to these two tone images. You can use this on any gradients with the settings that I have shown you within the menu. But you can also highlight everything within all of the clones that you have. And if you go to Path Union, after you give it a few seconds, it will join them all together. Now, if I was to come to my node tool, as you can see, there are thousands of nodes and that is the issue that you might find. However, if you're trying to reduce the amount of nodes, if you have little areas like this that you don't think you need to keep, then you can, of course, just go to Pass, Break Apart, and then Pass Union. And this is going to get rid of all of the different little voids in the center. Now, if I come back and I bring this back over with the background, we can now add anything that we want to it like it was a normal object. If you found this video interesting and useful, please let me know in the comments. You can give me a thumbs up as well as it shows me what content you really like. But if you didn't find it useful at all, please by all means give me a thumbs down. Until next time, thank you for watching. Did you know that you can become a member of the Button Press Graphics YouTube channel? Well, now you do. You will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel, enabling me to make much better content in the future. Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time.